Yes, well, I must go. I'll call you next week. And, of course, we can call people in the next street or the other side of the earth with this invention, the telephone. Wasn't always the case. Alexander Graham Bell, back in 1875, sent the very first telephone message. He did it accidentally. His friend Watson was working in another room. He thought he was in the same room, and he said, Watson, come here, I want you. Watson came running from the other room. He had heard that message go through the wires to a receiving device in the other room. And that's a message through a wire. But, of course, messages can also be sent through the air, through wireless or radio. And I'm sure you've heard of Marconi, who was one of the first people to play around with radio. Perhaps his most famous experiment occurred when he sent a message all the way from uh, Cornwall in England across the Atlantic Ocean to Newfoundland in Canada. And these days, of course, we can send messages around the world. The first person to suggest that we could do this was Arthur C. Clarke, back in 1945. He said, look, I think it should be possible to put satellites up there, artificial little moons, and bounce signals, radio or television signals or telephone signals, from those. And in fact, it turned out to be the case. That was long before satellites were placed in the sky. If you want to do that, the first thing you have to do, of course, is to send a satellite up in a rocket. Now, you can do it in a single rocket, or you can do it in the space shuttle. One of the main things that the Space Shuttle will be used for in the future is to place satellites in orbit. The Space Shuttle can be used over and over again for all sorts of experiments. When it reaches the correct altitude, the astronauts will be able to operate all sorts of uh, equipment, open hatches and deliver sat satellites to their orbits personally. Now, the communication satellites that are being used, and there are hundreds of them today being used, are, spe are special devices that not only receive those messages, but usually they amplify them and then send them back to Earth. So they're being used more than just a simple reflector. This one is called Comstar, and it's one of the many communication satellites that are up there orbiting around the Earth. Well, Arthur C. Clarke calculated that the best way to get these satellites up there was to put them into an orbit 35,900 kilometres above the equator. He called them synchronous satellites. The reason for that, synchronous means in time. When the Earth rotates once in 24 hours, a satellite in that position will rotate once as well. So it will appear to stay stationary above a certain spot on the Earth's surface. Now, it's way out here, and you can think of it as having an enormous cone stretching down to the Earth's surface like that. Any place on the Earth's surface under that cone can either send a message up to the satellite or receive one bouncing back. And Clark calculated that with three of these satellites around the Earth's equator, you could cover every spot on the Earth's surface except the very poles, which probably didn't matter all that much. And that's happened, and many of those satellites are up there, with messages bouncing backwards and forwards between them. Many programs that you see on television come via videotape. This one now has been recorded on magnetic tape and it's coming to you from a television station that's probably fairly nearby. But when you see things on the news service or sporting events that have come from the other side of the Earth and it says across the bottom, live via satellite, it means that that message is actually bouncing up and back from a satellite in space. When you ring grandma overseas, same thing is happening. And in fact, those radio, television, and telephone messages that go up and back and around the world may travel more than 100,000 kilometres before they reach you. And they bounce off communication satellites that have been put there especially for you, among others. 